what has been imposed on the hadith, the lies, and the concealed purpose oriented edition. The main subjects that Hassin Amin addresses in his book can actually be summarized into one subject, which is the superfluous additions to Islam that have corrupted the religion. But then he breaks them down into each chapter, he addresses a particular discipline. So you have the additions that crept into the Prophet's biographies, the fabricated hadith, the um, rituals that came from pagan religions and crept into Islam after the conquest of other territories, how the sects splintered, how the ideologies developed and ended up hating each other and being in conflict. So Hussein Ahmed Amin's motivations for writing uh, the Sorrowful Muslims Guide had a lot to do with the circumstances of the time. So it was the late 70s, early 80s, and the book is actually a compilation of articles that first appeared in Ad Doha magazine in Qatar. And um, this time saw the emergence of several extremist Islamist movements in Egypt, such as At Takfir al Hijra and Tanzim al Hijihad. And I think what he felt was that the authorities' way of um, dealing with these movements was purely through security crackdowns, which um, didn't really go to the root of the issue. So um, he saw that the emergence of these movements um, was accompanied with a lot, by, the, by a lot of um, ignorance and misconceptions in society on what really constitutes Islam. So he, he saw that um, we have to go back to the early centuries of Islam to see how it developed, how things were added to Islam that were then seen as integral parts of Islam when they really were not, and which led to the situation that we, were at, that we arrived at today. Hassin Amin tackles a lot of controversial questions in this book. Perhaps most of all is the hadith, because hadith is the second source of um, of the Sharia, the so-called Sharia, but this is also something he addresses in the book that actually the Sharia doesn't exist. Uh, God's Sharia is in the Quran and it's God's image of how God would have wanted the Muslim society to be. But what we are using in our rulings is Islamic law and Islamic law is man-made. So they the clerics confuse you by using the word sharia so that you don't argue because it's the sharia of God when it is actually Islamic man-made law. And this is to kill all discussions about it or questions or things like that. And of course the hadith is the same thing. They put words in, into the prophet's mouth and if he came today he would probably say, who said that? Definitely not me. So these are perhaps the two most controversial topics in the book. The book uh, was first translated into French in the early 90s by Richard Jacquemont, and that was an amazing um, thing. Uh, but obviously, uh, it being translated into English was something that he would have loved, uh, mainly because, of course, of the wider readership that the English translation would provide.